Councillor Vasco Takama. Thank you, councillors. Can we all rise for a moment of silence, please? You may be seated. It is hereby notified that the 12th Extraordinary Council Meeting of the City of Johannesburg Council will be held in the new Council Chamber, Ground Floor Metropolitan Centre, Brownfontein, on Wednesday and Thursday. That's 4th and 5th December 2019 at 10. Thank you very much. Um, could I please, at this time, those that have got their cell phones on, please to switch it off, make sure it's off, and please may I ask that no photos are taken with your flatlight, flashlight on uh, in the chamber, firstly, and can I ask the media please to occupy the space on top. Thank you. Um, Chief Whip of Council, Councillor Kevin Wax, Chair of Chairs, Councillor Alex Christians, uh, Committee Chairpersons, MPs and MPLs, MECs in the gallery, uh, Councillors, City Manager, Dr. Likwareni, Acting Secretary to Council, Andy Lechobache, uh, senior managers and officials of the city of Johannesburg, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. Um, there was a request, as you understood, that uh, the whips met just before um, this, count, this uh, uh, election process. Um, they have had no chance yet to meet with their caucuses and for us to uh, apply the rule of the 20 minutes after 10 o'clock, the meeting was called for 10 o'clock and we, we allowed, we really at this point would allow the caucuses, if so requested, to have that break at this moment. Councillor Mukhase. Thanks, Speaker. Out of your input, as we just held a meeting with other with of other parties, I would concur with you. We're requesting as the ANC a 25 minutes caucus. Correct. So all caucuses can have the, uh, the briefing from the whips uh, at this point. So we will adjourn and then please come back in uh, 20 minutes. Thank you very much.
Thulani man, thulani, hlalani phansi. Sing other songs, comrades man. That song is boring now. ZCC. Settle down, settle down, settle down.
Thank you, councillors. Can we please settle down? Councillors, can we please settle down? Thank you, councillors. <coughs> councillors, before we close the, the doors, um, we'll just go th through the process uh, that where we stopped last week on Thursday, uh, on the legal opinion obtained. Uh, councillors, uh, the meeting that I convened this morning uh, with the assistance of the Chief Whip, with all the whips, uh, came to an agreement that the op opinion provided uh, by Stockwell, uh, C and Lee Tolle, um, from a company called Mandlope and Zenga Incorporated uh, is correct, and that legal opinion is accepted. Um, and I'm going to try and, and cover just the salient points, uh, Councillor Novella. Thank you very much, Speaker, but you are misrepresenting what transpired in that meeting because the EFF did not agree with the legal opinion. And in actual fact, we would like to put it on record that it's not consistent with the true interpretation of, of Schedule 3, item, item 7 and 8. We do not agree with that legal opinion because there's no mayor who will be voted without the mandate of the majority. Because to be able to run the city, pass reports and pass budget, you're going to require the, ma the majority, mandate of the majority. And therefore, we do not agree with that legal opinion obtained. That is what we have said in that meeting, and we want to put it on record, even in this council. So don't misrepresent the position of the EFF on that legal op opinion obtained. Thank you. Councillors, can I then, you know, I, I really don't know how to deal with this because, because and, and I'll qualify it, and I'll qualify it as to what we agreed on. Um, the agreement was that out of 269 councillors, if that is the case today, that 50 plus 1 would be 136. And when you go into the first round with three candidates, that was the explanation, with three candidates, it would mean that can, the can majority... Can we help you, Speaker? Councillor Novella. Speaker, on the previous meeting, you requested to go and source out an external legal opinion, which you are going to come and present to Council, on how the process is going to proceed. So present the legal opinion. Present it, the one that you have got, because that's what you are supposed to do procedurally. You told us we must wait for seven days without proper leadership in Johannesburg. 
so you can source out the legal opinion, you'll come present it here, so that there's clarity on how the process must, must, must happen. Please, pre present that legal opinion you have sourced to this house, not somewhere else where you have no mandate to do it. Thank you. Councillor, I'm, I'm going to read it out as is. And here to refer to um, our consultant, the Speaker of the City of Johannesburg, seeks an urgent opinion on what m the meaning is to be ascribed to the words a majority of votes, where same appears in item 7 of Schedule 3 to the Local uh, Government Municipal Structures Act. When interpreting a document, it is imperative for that document to be read in its proper context. For this reason, we commence our opinion by quoting both the provisions of item 6 and 7. 6. Election procedure. If more than one candidate is nominated, a vote must be taken at the meeting by secret ballot. Each councillor, that's B, each councillor present at the meeting may cast one vote. And C, the person presiding must declare elected the candidate who receives a majority of the votes. Those are the questions that were asked for the, le for, for, for the legal guys. And then seven, elimination procedure. If no candidate won, if no candidate receives a majority of votes, the candidate who receives the lowest number of votes must be eliminated and a further vote taken on the remaining candidates in accordance with item 6. This procedure must be repeated until a candidate receives the majority of votes. 2. When applying sub-item 1 of two or more candidates, each have the lowest number of votes, a separate vote must be taken on those candidates and repeat it as often as may be necessary to determine which candidate is to be eliminated. Three, before we proceed to deal with the meaning of the words, a majority of councillors of votes, we believe it is necessary to remind the reader of the process, which is applied when interpreting a statutory instrument. His Lordship, Mr. Judges Wallace, and here they quote a previous case, in Natal Joint Municipal Pension Fund visit is in Dumeni municipality explained it as follows. Interpretation is the process of attributing meaning to the words used in a document, be it legislation, some other statutory instrument or contract having regard to the context provided by reading the, the particular provision or provisions in light of the document as a whole and the circumstances attended upon it coming into existence. Whatever the nature of the document uh, considered must be given to the language used in the light of the ordinary rules of grammar and and syntax, the context in which the provision appears, the apparent purpose to which it is directed, and the material known to those responsible for its production. Where more than one meaning is possible, each possibility must be weighed in the light of these factors. The process is objective, not subjective. A sensible meaning is to be preferred to one that leads to insensible un or unbusinesslike results or undermines the apparent purpose of the document. Judges must be alert to and guard against the temptation to sub substitute what they regard as reasonable, sensible or businesslike for the words actually used. To do so in regard to a statute or statutory instrument 
is to cross the divide between interpretation and legislation. In a contractual context, it is to make a contract for the parties other than the one they in fact made. The ininvitable point of departure is the language of the provision itself, re read in context and having regard to the purpose of the provision and the background to the preparation and the production of the document. For following the above approach, it is necessary when interpreting the provision of Schedule 3 and when ascribing a meaning to the words a majority of votes to give a purpose full meaning to the words used an interpretation which renders the provision impossible of implementation or which leads to an abs absurdity should be avoided five albeit that the readers immediate reaction would conceivably be that a majority of votes means that it is the candidate who obtains the most votes. Such conclusion is counted and nullified by the remainder of the provision of item 7. The remainder of item 7 provides a process elimination to be followed. This process must be followed until one candidate, one candidate is able to achieve the majority of the votes. This in, in leads one to the conclusion that a majority of votes can only mean more than half of the votes, for example, 50% of the votes plus one. And then six, the above was also the meaning ascribed to the words majority of votes. In the Cape Bar Judicial Services Commission, and accepted to be correct by both parties, we, however, hasten to add that each legislature or other document needs to, to be read and interpreted on its own and in the proper context. One must be cautious to ascribe a meaning ascribed to words in one context to the same words used in a different context of different legislation. The next question to be addressed is whether majority of votes means 50% plus one of the votes cast or whatever it is, 50% plus one of the available votes. To better explain this question, let's say, for instance, there are three or more candidates and one and none of them manages to achieve a majority of the votes. Following the elimination process, one of the candidates will then fall away, being the candidate who obtained the least votes. However, and when following the next round of secret ballot voting, the party whose candidate has been eliminated may decide not to cast their vote or even ruin their votes. In such an instance, the remaining candidates are likely to achieve the exact number, same number of votes which they had achieved in the previous round of voting. If the municipality of votes, if the majority of votes means the majority of available votes, none of the candidates will receive a majority of the votes of the councillors in attendance. One such an interpretation, a minority party could conceivably hamstrung and keep the city to ransom in its request to appoint a new mayor. In our opinion, such an interpretation would undoubtedly lead to an absurd result. Eight, accordingly, and in our opinion, the votes referred to in item 6C and 7-1 must and can only mean votes validly cast. Should any party or one or more of its councillors thus attend council meetings but refrain from voting, 
their attendance would be rendered irrelevant when calculating the majority of votes um, or total of the votes. Nine, in conclusion, we are therefore of the, of the opinion that the majority of votes is dependent upon the total number of votes cast. Accordingly, consultant must first establish the total number of votes cast, which means the speaker, by dividing the total by two and then adding one, a number will be obtained, which will then constitute the majority of votes. Such interpretation is not only pragmatic, but also accords with what is required in section 63C of the Constitution. Councillors, that is the legal opinion. Councillor Mukhasi, your hand was up before I spoke. No, I'm, a, I'm a case for you. You're fine. I'm a case for you. Thank you. Councillor Novella. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm sure you are aware that uh, item five of that very same legal opinion you read and item seven uh, and item nine, five and nine speaks against each other. On the, on the last paragraph of item five of the opinion says, therefore, majority of votes therefore means 50% plus one. If you read it, and then the, uh, the, the then item nine goes to say it can only then conclude that it must only be 50% plus one of valid votes. of valid vote, so they speak past each other. So because nine comes after the five, it means nine then will apply. According to your opinion, if nine applies, it means even in the first round, there's no necessity of going through elimination process. According to that, because it concludes by saying, if I can read it out, uh, with your permission, speaker, or if you do not mind, you can read it out for us so that uh, we are all on the same page. In conclusion, we are therefore of the opinion that majority of votes is dependent upon the total number of vote cast. Accordingly, consultant must first establish the total number of votes cast by dividing total by two and then adding one. A number will be obtained which will then constitute the majority of votes. Such interpretation is not only pragmatic, but also accords with the required, required requirements. I think the, I suspect they wanted to write requirements in section 160 of the Constitution. So if that is the conclusion of the opinion speaker, it therefore means we do not then need the elimination process, even if there's nobody who have required the 50% plus one of this cancer. That will be our understanding, according to you, yeah. But even so, we still dispute that it cannot be that cancer be run without man, uh, the mandate of the majority, which will be a requirement that need to be fulfilled to pass, amongst others, the budget. So it means we'll have an executive that do not have the mandate of the majority, that cannot even pass budget, which therefore will render the municipality dysfunctional. So in, 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 in that sense, Speaker, it therefore means, sorry, uh, we are being pointed in a very dangerous uh, territory. And the EFF would like to oppose that and want to lobby this council not to agree to this legal opinion. We would like to lobby this council not to agree to this legal opinion. Because it's pointing us to a direction where we'll have a, an executive constituted without mandate of the majority. 
And that majority, which is a requirement to pass amongst other things, as we have given an example, the budget. It therefore, we are going to wake up with a city which is dysfunctional. As long as, I, I don't want to preempt that there are going to be three candidates because it feels like the others on the other side, they want to withdraw their candidate. But I'm just saying, if that is the case, if that is the case, it means we are going to wake up with a dis dysfunctional city of Johannesburg because those who will be governing would not have the mandate of the majority and they might not even be able to pass budget. Thank you very much. Councillors, my understanding is completely different to Councillor Novella's. And my understanding is quite simple, that if you've got 269 councillors in the chamber, you constitute, first of all, a meeting, right? If you've got less than the 136, um, you cannot have a meeting. In other words, this meeting is valid simply because the majority of councillors are in this chamber. That's the first thing. Secondly, the majority would be the 136. In other words, if you only have 136 councillors in this chamber, you can have your meeting, right? And that includes budgets and everything else. Now, the way I understand this opinion, it's, it's basically saying that you only go into a, an elimination process if you have not, like we currently are right now, um, and those vo uh, valid votes cast, um, if we have 269 valid votes cast without any spoiled um, ballots, it would actually mean that whoever's got the majority above the 136, in fact, has won the elections. That's how I understand it. And that's how it explains itself. And give me a second to confer with legal next to me, uh, whether I'm correct, just to confirm whether I'm correct, before I allow Councillor Mabona to ask the question. Yeah, just, just fl further clarification. In other words, in round one, if nobody receives 136 and above 136, we then go into an elimination process. That's how I understand this document. And that's the clarity that we were seeking. And I think it's quite clear in here that that is how we should proceed. Is that agreed, councillors? Councillor Mukhase? No, I, I think, Speaker, on our side as the ANC, your interpretation are correct. And we agree with your interpretation. And would like council to continue. Thank you. Councillor Mabona. Yeah, no, thanks very much, Speaker. I, I thought I agreed with you. I thought I understood you very well when you said that in order for Johannesburg City Council to elect a mayor, we need to have 50% plus one, which is a mayor can only be elected when we are having 136. Is that your interpretation of what you are saying, Speaker? If there's no 136, then we don't have a, a mayor. That's what, you, that's what you've just said now. I'm sorry for the dialogue to respond to you because you've asked me a question. 
I think that uh, for the first round, yes. First See, round. That's, 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 where, yes. that's where, Speaker, that's where the, the confusion you're causing into this house. This, you're speaking only on the first round. When the elimination has been done, according to what you just said, you're saying now it's no longer 50% plus one. Of which we are saying that in order for a mayor to be elected in this, in this council, we need to have 136 votes, even in the second round. Thank you. I, I, I think that the, the Structures Act explains itself, and that's why it's provided for the elimination process, and, and, and therefore you would only concentrate on valid votes. Um, I mean, even in a normal election, we concentrate on valid votes. We don't concentrate on those spoiled or those, um, those people that have put in a blank paper. I hope you understand it. Uh, Councillor Ngobeni. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, Speaker, and good morning to all the councillors. Um, and obviously the, the gallery there. Thank you very much for joining us in this very important day. Speaker, I think um, uh, we wanted to make our position clear as the DA caucus and the coalition partners um, that you have asked us to go and, uh, and, uh, and seek a legal opinion. We respected your decision. Um, much as um, we were told and you were also um, lamented on the media by others. You came back with it, you circulated it to all of us, um, and you even went further to also have a meeting with the WIPs this morning. Um, as a caucus, we fully support your legal opinion and agree with it. We want to see this council today electing a mayor of the city of Johannesburg. We, we want to see democracy reign here. And um, if, Speaker, it needs to be, um, you want us to vote on this legal opinion, because the report that you are tabling to us here, um, so that there must not be any confusion after elections has happened. If there's, if there's, a, there's a need for, for you to ask us to vote on it, so that you can have a council resolution on this. I think you should consider that. Because um, from what I'm picking up, it seems like there, there is some confusion and uh, some disagreement on the interpretation of what is on paper there. And I think it's very important that it must be recorded in council that it has been approved or declined or, de or refused by this council so that we can be able to, to, be, to have comfort that you will not be challenged in court. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Ngoveni. There was a hand up before. Was your hand up, Councillor? I think Councillor Ngoveni was supporting us on that. You are supporting what you have interpreted into Council. If there's need for us to move to a agreeing, a vote happens in Council to say we're agreeing with your interpretation, let there be the second thing that we'll do as Council. But Thank you very much. But said we agreed with your interpretation. Uh, Councillor Novella. Speaker, let the records uh, reflect that the EFF uh, uh, dissents with the interpretation that uh, was provided from your office. Thank you. Councillors, to make sure that I actually take the right decision, decision on this issue. Um, I'm going to ask legal just to um, prepare recommendations on the legal opinion that we've received, just to make sure that we've got a proper process to vote on it. I note the dissent of the EFF but I still suggest that we 
um, uh, ensure that the legal opinion obtained is correct and the majority of the House actually agrees with it. Is that fine? Thank you very much. We'll just come back in about 10 minutes. Let legal just prepare this. Thank you very much. Councillors, councillors, before, before you, you go out, somebody has lost a Samsung cell phone, an S7. Please, if you pick it up or you've got it, please come and leave it here at the desk so that we can give that person back his cell phone. Is that fine, councillors? Thank you.
Councillors, while there is a break, those councillors that have not signed, please make sure that you do sign um, to ensure that you are registered because we are going to uh, look at that list and in fact confirm whether you are here. And that's why the need for your ID, the card that was provided to you, or otherwise a driver's license in this case. Thank you. Councillors, councillors, we are busy uh, ensuring that the recommendations are printed and it will be distributed to all councillors. So they're busy printing. Please be patient. We're busy typing. It is completed typing. We will then uh, ensure that it's circulated to all councillors. Thank you very much.
Rwanda Chabula Nino Auzwege Chaina Siofuta Simote Lumaku Chabula Nino Auzwege Se <laughs> Chabula Nino Nke Hauswege Sifote la novela Tina siofuta Sifote la novela Sifote la novela Musa novela Tsuara Sata Sa Dile mfasi man Kwea Sha
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Les muscles out, hello. Now we are selling out.
councillors. Let's begin, councillors. Let's begin.
Councillors, can we ta start settling down, please? Thank you, councillors. Can you please settle down? Councillor Christians, have you got a copy? Okay. Councillors, um, we have distributed a hundred of these forms and obviously um, I hope that all the leadership within the different political parties have got a copy and that you are happy with it. I will ask Councillor Christians at this point, just to read out the recommendations. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, this is item 75.1. And on page 75.2 is the recommendations, and it is recommended that, one, that Council note the report Two, that Council adopt the legal opinion provided. And three, that the Speaker is authorised to implement the Council decision. Thank you. Councillors, the recommendations are on page 75.2. Is the recommendations agreed to? Thank you. Uh, we note the councillor Sanyane. Speaker, can you please note the dissent of the EFF? Noted, uh, councillor Sanyane. Therefore, the recommendations are agreed to. Thank you very much. Councillors, I'm now going to go through the uh, procedure. Councillors, before I continue with the uh, meeting, for the election of the Executive Mayor for the City of Johannesburg in, in accordance with Section 3 of the Act. Schedule 3 of the Act, before we commence with the meeting, I must bring the following matters to your attention uh, as councillors. In terms of Schedule 3 to the Act, as a presiding officer, I must call for nominations of candidates for the vacant position of the Executive Mayor at this meeting. Each nomination must be submitted on the prescribed form and must be signed by two councillors, a nominee and a seconder. At this point, those that uh, want a nomination form, can I ask the IEC then with a show of hands, please indicate uh, that you want a form. It will be given to you at this point, while I'm reading the rest. Each nomination form must be submitted on the prescribed form and must be signed by two councillors, a nominee 
and a seconder. A person's nomination must indicate acceptance of the nomination by signing the nomination form. In other words, the candidate that is standing and that you've nominated must sign the acceptance of that nomination form. Furthermore, I draw your attention to item four of the schedule of schedule three, to the act in terms of which the person presiding at this meeting must announce the names of persons who have been nominated as candidates but may not permit a debate. In other words, we're not going to have a debate. In terms of item five of the schedule, if only one candidate has been nominated, the person presi presiding must declare that candidate elected. If more than one con candidate is nominated and in accordance with item six of the schedule, a vote must be taken at the meeting by secret, secret ballot. Each councillor present at the meeting may cast one vote. The person presiding must declare elected the candidate who receives the majority of votes. In terms of item seven of the schedule, elimination, the elimination procedure. If no candidate receives a majority of the votes, the candidate who receives the lowest number of votes must be eliminated and a further vote taken on the remaining candidates in accordance with item six. This procedure must be repeated until the candidate receives a majority of votes. Two, when applying sub-item one of two or more candidates, each must have the lowest number of votes. A separate vote must be taken on those candidates and repeated as often as may be necessary to determine which candidate to be eliminated. In terms of item eight, further meetings. <clears throat> In other words, if we don't succeed today, this will be the process. If only, only two candidates are nominated, or if in, only two candidates remain after an elimin, in elimination process or procedure has been applied, and those two candidates receive the same number of votes, a further meeting must be held within seven days at the time determined by the person presiding. If a further meeting is held in terms of sub-item one, the procedure prescribed in this schedule must be applied at that meeting as if it were the first meeting for the election in question. Three, if at a further meeting held in terms of sub-item one, only two candidates are nominated, or if only two candidates remain after the elimination procedure has been applied, and those two candidates receive the same number of votes, the person presiding at such meeting must determine, determine by lot who of the two candidates will hold the office of which the election has taken place. Councillors, that is the procedure. And therefore, councillors, at this point, I'm going to ask whether all of you have in fact signed the register. There's no person that has not signed the register. Can I confirm from the IEC? On the register. As to how many Voters are in the chamber, according to the register. What's the number? What's the total number? Yeah. Can I also just um, confirm from the different political parties, is there any leaves of absences? Councillor de Kock. Speaker, Councillor Nagan, uh, duty ill health.
Councillor Nagan, due to ill health. Status. Any other councillor uh, that's absent? Any other person absent? Councillors, then at this point I must ask, is Lady Grace Paddy here? She's not. So, Ntate Mukhase, what's her lying? Mr. Mukhase, what's happening? Are you not aware that she's not around? You are still a councillor. From our point, we are expecting her to, to be here. We were expecting her to be part of the meeting. But you did not send forth your apology. I don't have it with me. Speaker. I give you a house starter. When you started speakers? Yeah. The house I didn't bring to your attention that I have a council house off. That's what I'm saying. I'll check with you then inform you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so, according to this list, three councillors, the councillor that passed away, uh, councillor Grace Party, and the confirmation by Councillor de Kock on um, the other councillor. Councillor Nagan, which basically puts the number at 267. Can I have the doors closed, please? Councillors, we're going to ring the bell for five minutes to allow anybody that's still outside to come in. After that, we'll ensure that the door stays closed. We will then, we will then proceed with the nomination process. And after the nomination process, because it's lunch, we will then go to lunch, come back and vote.
Speaker, can we just continue and finish? Yembelanda, 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 Thank you. Thank you, councillors. Can you please take your seats? Thank you. Thank you. Competition is on. <laughs> councillors, I've heard a dissent. Um, on the break for lunch. Councillors, you must remember that the after the nomination process, the ballots must be printed. And we need time for that. So, councillors, please think before you howl now. Eh? Thank you. <laughs> councillors, I've got three forms in front of me of councillors that has been nominated. Um, I've got the first form, a proposer, Slumka Mabona, hereby uh, nominates Musa Novella. Thank you. And second... Ah, speaker, ha. Huh? Also say I've accepted. <laughs> Not yet. You are too too hasty to accept. Wait for me, Councillor Novella. Seconded by Councillor Karaba Karabo Shonyani. Shonyani, it's your handwriting, whoever you are. It's Karabo Shonyani. Cabo Cabo Tonyana. Uh, on the acceptance form, I see Councillor Musa Novella. Are you accepting? Yes, Speaker, I accept to serve people of Johannesburg. Thank you very much. Going to the next one. Councillor Floyd, Floyd Eisenhower Phillips, hereby nominate Councillor Geoff Makubu for the position. It is therefore. It is therefore seconded 
Seconded by Humphrey Chauke. Councillor Geoff Makubu, do you accept? Yes, Speaker, I'm available to serve. Thank you, councillors. The next. Thank you, councillors. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next uh, councillor that has been proposed. The proposer is uh, Karachan Amos. Um, proposing Councillor Funzela Ngobeni for the position of the executive mayor. The seconder, the seconder to this proposal is uh, Councillor Franco Carl de Lange. Councillor Richard Funzela Ngobeni, do you accept? Yes, Speaker, I accept. Thank and you. thank you very much. Thank you, councillors. I will therefore now hand over this to the IEC to prepare the ballot papers. Just take it. All right, councillors, at this point, uh, the I have confirmed that the forms have been correctly filled in, and therefore I've handed them over to the IEC to do the ballot paper. I therefore have a sample in front of me. This is the ballot paper. No, little Ivana. You will see it. You'll have to, you'll have to get fair cakers. <laughs> so the IEC, while we have, Councillor Mfikwe, you were very quiet since since now. Please, man. Councillor Mukhasi, did you bring the packs? <laughs> I hope you've brought the packs. Councillors, at this point, we will then take a break and please come back after lunch. Make sure that you are back in time. Uh, two o'clock, sharp. sharp.